Hello. Welcome to the third and final part of our series of tutorials on using the overlay blending modes in Photoshop. There's lots of other things that you can do with these blending modes, but this is going to be the last one. I'm going to take this photo and I'm going to use everything that we've learned so far using the blending modes and the high pass filter to create a different look on this photo than what we've got going so far. We've got kind of a dark and moody thing so far, so I'm going to use these techniques to accentuate that and create a very dramatic, almost painterly effect, a little bit like Dave Hill, but this isn't a Dave Hill technique. This is uh, certainly just something that vaguely reminds me of that. Um, we are going to be using these techniques that we've learned in sort of a problem-solving way. Every time a problem comes up, we're going to think of how we can solve it using the tools that Photoshop gives us. And that's really what Photoshop is all about, to be able to work through these problems because you have this humongous tool set to do that with. And we're going to use as, uh, just some very simple tools and create a pretty interesting effect, I think. So let's get started. So I've got this image. And it's very smooth and even tonality and very nice, but it is kind of a moody image. But what I'd like to do is pop out the contrast in this face a little bit. Make these highlights look a little more etched almost and painted and uh, bring up the contrast and make him pop out a little more. So I'm going to open my layers palette. I'm going to copy this first layer just like we did when we were sharpening. I'm going to copy this first layer and I'm going to go ahead and put it on um, soft light so we can kind of see what we're doing when we're applying the hard uh, or the, the high pass filter. I'm going to go to filter, other, high pass. Now this is going to be the basis of what we're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to drag this down and 3.5, that's a little high for sharpening. Um, we were kind of under three in the last tutorial, and that's really kind of the sharpening range. We're going to go crazy here. We're going to go way wider. And, uh, and now what we're doing is we're creating a, a large contrast effect as opposed to a sharpening effect. We're also sharpening in the process, but we're actually going to see that as a negative. We don't, I don't want to sharpen this too much. I just want to increase this contrast. So I'm going to play around until I think uh, everything's looking kind of good. It's accentuating in parts that I want to accentuate. Um, and it's really making these areas stand out a little more proud. So I'm going to accept 44.4 and it's going to apply the high pass to this. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. It's going to 50% here. Now if I turn this on and off you can see what a dramatic effect that makes. Now I'm actually going to make it a little more dramatic. I'm going to go over here to hard light. See, I like that better. In this case, I really want that sort of a hard effect. So hard light, absolutely. So I can see what this is doing and the problem that I'm having with it is that it's accentuating his pores entirely too much. So in addition to the contrast that it's adding, it's also adding the sharpness. Now, how do we get rid of that? Let's put this into normal, and that'll give us some hints. So in this layer, this is our uh, the one that we're using in the overlay mode, we can see that there's all these little details. So if they're darker than 50% gray, they're darkening the image underneath it. And if they're lighter than 50% gray, they're lightening the image underneath it. Now, I don't want each one of these pores to show up. But I had to turn the dial all the way up to get this sort of effect, so what am I going to do? I'm going to blur it. There's lots of different techniques we could use, but I'm going to use the surface blur because the whole idea here is that it's an edge defining effect, so I don't want to lose my edges. And if I do a Gaussian blur, I'm going to lose my edges. Did my dialog box come up? Oh, it came up way down there. Now, I actually the easiest way to use this surface blur is to turn the threshold all the way up. Decide on the smallest radius that you can possibly use and still blur out what you want to blur out. So I'm going to go somewhere around 7 on this. And then take your threshold back down to where you're getting the edge defining effect that you want. So I still want these edges like up here where his eye is, I want these to still remain edges. 
at the corner of his face. I don't want that to blur too much. I don't want to lose that information in the high pass layer. I just want to lose the little information, the pores and things like that. So I'm going to apply that and this filter takes a little while. So what we're doing here is we're really using the tools that we know are going to do what we want to do and then we kind of have to deal with their side effects a little bit and that's where all the problem solving comes in and that's really what makes an excellent user, Photoshop user different from a good Photoshop user is to be able to decide which tool is going to be correct to get you to exactly where you want to be. It's envisioning the final result and then getting there using the tools. So now we've got a much, I mean it's still the exact same amount of contrast but it's not emphasizing those pores anymore. Now it's making a very painterly sort of effect that I really like. I'm going to back off a little bit again. Now the problem I'm having with it now is that the colors are getting kind of garish. We're getting some greenishness in his skin and some reddish here and it's just a little too much. So the reason I think that's happening is because look at how much color we have in our high pass layer. Turning the, the radius up so high let a lot of color bleed through. So, that's easy enough. I'm going to go to adjustments, desaturate. This isn't going to change the value of any of the pixels, it's just going to change them to gray. So now when we put that in hard light, we're only affecting the value. We're not affecting the color. And so I like that a lot better. It's a little too hard, so I'm going to back it off a little bit, right about there. And I also just want it to affect his face. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Option key and select a mask. And that's going to make a mask that's filled with black, so now I don't see anything. I'm going to use a gradient, a circular gradient from black to white, reversed, so it's actually from white to black. I'm going to click in the middle of his face, drag out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I've basically done a really gross selection of his face. It's just like this. It's just a gradient, kind of selecting his face, you know, but it's bleeding in around it. I'm not worried about that at all. I want this effect to affect his face, but I really don't want it to affect these bricks. See what it does when it's affecting those bricks? Don't like it, but I do like it on his face. I also don't like it on his shirt, come, come to think of it. So, I've now isolated it just down to his face. I've got it looking the way I want. What else can I see that I really, you know what, now I'm flicking that on and off. I see there's a halo right around here. That's one of those dead giveaways of, of a, a not so great Photoshop use, is when you get those halos around things. It, it, it just drives me nuts. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to use uh, my knowledge of how this overlay mode works and I'm going to get rid of that that uh, halo right on the layer. So now I've selected the layer itself. I'm going to go in to my color picker, select a 50% gray, say OK. The halo is lighter than what's around it. I do want it to darken his hair. I don't want it to lighten this. So I'm going to go in with a brush, set to darker color. I've got it on 30%. I can definitely crank that up. We want it more like 70%. And I'm going to brush out this halo. See, I'm painting right on the high pass layer with 50% gray. And because it's darker color, it's not going to lighten any of the dark areas. It's only going to darken the light areas of this and it's going to push them towards 50% gray which is going to make them do nothing to the underlying layer. And so now we've gotten rid of that uh, halo. I think that that effect is about complete. 
So this isn't the only thing you can do with an overlay layer. There's a lot of other different techniques that you can use, uh, dodging and burning, lots of different things. But this is a, you know, a great example of how to use this layer to increase contrast, and it's also a great example of how to um, problem solve in Photoshop. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.